Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to solve the web challenges from Cake CTF 2023. So the first challenge which we are going to solve is the country DB challenge. In the description we can see that we can search country codes in this website. So let's take a look. So as you can see here, we are given an input field in which we can enter the country code to get the country name. For example, if we enter the country code as IN and click on search, we will get the country name as India. Also we can notice that only two characters can be entered into the input field and when you try to enter more characters, the input is not taken. So to understand the logic behind the websites, let's open up the source code and see what is happening. So from the source code, we can tell that this is a Flask application and is using SQLite 3 library. This library is used to execute this particular query. Also we can see that there is a variable name code which is being used in the query and this is being passed to the function. Coming to API endpoints, we can see the endpoint API search. This is where the country codes which we have submitted end up. Looking at the function, we can tell that there are two main conditions that are required by the input in order to pass it to the DB search function. And the two conditions are the input should be of length 2 and should not have a single quote in it. But it is impossible for us to write the payload in two characters and not write it without a single quote. But we have a workaround. What we can do is we can pass an array with the payload in it. This array can bypass the both conditions. It is of length 2 and doesn't contain an element which has only single quote. So let's start a server in our local machine and check if this payload works. So I'm going to open up Burpsuit. So let's first see how the post request looks like. So now let's send this request to the repeater and try out our different combinations. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to use an array in which the initial part will be the payload and second part will be some gibberish. To make the code neglect about the second part, we can comment out all the remaining part after the first payload using dash dash. So let me send this request. As you can see here, we got an error response. Let's see how the error response looks like. So the error tells that this is an operational error, but our logic of the payload is working. So we can figure out why this error is occurring by looking at the code. Here in the query, we can see that they are using upper function, but after our input, we are just commenting out the remaining part, which is causing the single quote and the closing brackets to lose out. So we should voluntarily give all these inputs in our input. So let me just add the single quote and the closing parenthesis into the input. So as you can see here, we are successful in getting a response. Now that we are able to figure out how to send the payload, let's look at the schema of the database. So in the database, you can see that there are two tables named country and flag and flag is what we have to get. The query that is being executed in the application code is using the country table, but we have to use the flag table to get the flag. So in such cases, we'll be using the union based SQL injection. We also know that the number of columns that are being retrieved are equals to 1 from the application code. As you can see here, we are successful in retrieving the value. From this, we can tell that the union attack works. And what we can do is we can select the flag from the flag table in order to get it. Now that we got complete payload, let's send this to the actual server and retrieve the flag. So here it is guys, we are finally able to get the flag. Now let's get into the second challenge, which is called TOEFL. I was able to solve this using black box method. I never looked at the source code. By looking at the title and at the website, you can tell that this is all about writing an exam. So let's open up this website and look at all the endpoints using Burpsuit. When you click on start exam, it will take you to an endpoint API start using post method. This is one of the important API. So let me just send this to the repeater. Once you forward this, you will find the API for all the 10 questions, which are not important for us. 
when you click on the submit button you will see that there's an endpoint called api submit with all the data being sent to the server this endpoint is also a very important one so let me just send this to the repeater once you forward this request you will get another endpoint called api score this is also one of the important apis so let me send this to the repeater so here are the three apis which are responsible for solving this challenge now let's look at the working of each endpoint so this post request to the endpoint api start will fetch us a token for the exam as you can see here we got our session token this session token is required for both submitting the answers and also to get the scores of a particular exam. This post request to the endpoint API submit will send the options that we have filled up for each and every question to the server. For this request, there is nothing much that we can get from the response. This get request to the endpoint API score will fetch our score from the server. And in order to get the flag, we have to get 100 out of 100. But the catch here is that we can submit the exam using a single token how many times ever we want. So we can brute force all the 100 questions from 0 to 4 in order to get the correct answer. So this is the payload which I wrote to automate the process. The code is first going to send a post request to the cookie URL and get the session token. Once we get the response, we can find this session token in the set cookie header. Initially, we are going to have the score as 0 and each and every iteration, the score will keep on increasing based on the response. Once you run this script, you should be able to get the flag. As you can see here, finally we are able to get the flag. Now let's solve the third challenge, add block. As you can see here, we are being given two links from which we can directly guess that this is an XSS attack. In such kind of challenges, one link will be given for us to build posts or blocks and the other link will be given to submit the link of the block which we have created. As expected, in the initial link, we can create a blog. We can give the title for the blog and we can write some blog content. So let's try a basic XSS payload in the blog content. So here I'm going to use the alert function to check for XSS. As you can see here, we are not able to see any alert messages, which means that there is some kind of sanitization or purification of the content that is happening. Let's inspect the page and see what is happening. As you can see here, there is nothing present in the ID content, which means that the script tag which we wrote is completely sanitized. And if you see in the head division, you will be able to find that they are using DOM purification with the version 3.0.6. Once I got to know this, I tried to find if there are any known vulnerabilities for this version of DOM purify. But as you can see here, 3.0.6 is the latest version of DOM purify. Now let's look at the code and see if we can find any other vulnerabilities possible. First let's look at the block.html. So as you can see here, initially the content is being sanitized using DOM purify and is being set as the inner HTML for the division with ID as content. Here we can see that there is a function named detect add block. This function is defined in the file add.js and tells whether the browser is blocking ads or not by fetching the URL that is provided by Google ads. Here we can see that if the browser is blocking the ads, then there will be a new function that will be created named show overlay. And if this function is defined, then it will be called using the set timeout function. And this particular code will be executed if it is undefined. Now what we can do is we can create our own show overlay function and perform DOM clobbering. As you can see here, I have created my own anchor tag with the ID as show overlay. Now to show you a demo of how this works, let me create a new file called demo.html and create a server. 
let me remove all the unnecessary parts in the script tag and rewrite the whole thing. Here I have made the necessary changes and logging the show overlay function to the console. Initially, let's see what happens if the add block function returns true. Here we can see that the function is equal to the same value that is in the code. Let's see what will happen if we change the value from true to false. As you can see here, the show overlay variable has been assigned to the anchor tag which we have defined. Now we can write a JavaScript function and call it from the reference value of the anchor tag. I have written a small function named p which will print malicious on the console. As you can see here, after the 1000 milliseconds, we'll be able to see malicious on the console. Now let's try to do the same attack which we will be doing if XSS was possible, calling a webhook. I'm going to use webhook.site to get the URL. Now to find what is the variable which we have to retrieve to get the flag, let's try to check the crawler logic. Here we can see that the crawler is visiting our URL using a cookie named flag with the value as flag. So in our logic, we are going to use document.cookie variable to get the flag. So as you can see here, we are able to get the document.cookie variable in the get parameter. Now let's create a blog using the same anchor tag and see what will happen. As you can see here, we are successfully being redirected to the webhook site. Now let's submit the blog ID to the admin and see what will happen. So here we can see that the admin has successfully sent us a request along with the cookie. So we got the flag. Thank you for watching guys. Please do like, share and subscribe.